Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. This is the place where women who are aging beautifully come to be inspired. And my guests today are going to talk to us about a topic that I know is on the mind of many women who are thinking about aging in place as they retire. Now, my guests today are Anthony Cirillo. Anthony is the president of the AgingExperience.com, which is a, a site that helps to put the positive spin on aging. He is the creator of a very interesting online summit called the Caregiver Smile Summit. This is where he interviews a whole range of experts on the issues around caregiving. And also, um, he's the, on the board of the uh, Senior Net, which is an organization for helping seniors with technology. So he's definitely got the uh, perspective of the seniors in place. So welcome, Anthony. Thanks, Margaret. It is really great to have you here. Thank you. And our other guest is Brian, Brian Harvey. Now, Brian is the uh, owner of Harvey Mo Home Modifications. It's a building and remodeling business in Boston. And he's a certified aging in place specialist. They call them CATS remodelers or specialists. And this is a program that was designed by the National Association of Home Builders to help people um, you know, plan and, and create home modifications for aging in place. So two really good people who know this topic uh, so well. Now, we've talked earlier um, about the whole issue of, of aging in place, but we are living in a whole new world of technology. So, Anthony, tell us about what's available now uh, in the way of technology to help uh, this aging in place uh, phenomenon. Yeah, and, and there's so much, and, and there's more every day that you start learning about. And, you know, I sort of divvy it up two ways. One is the idea of, um, you know, safety and then isolation, all right, because there's, there's a technology that's actually emerging that can actually address the socialization. Uh, but certainly the safety is probably the most important yeah. part and, and pertinent to this discussion. So, you know, we, we, a lot of this industry started with the personal emergency pendants, you know, the joke, I've fallen and I can't get up, you know. <laughs> right. and, but they've, you know, they've stood the test of time and now they can actually do a lot more. Uh, you know, it used to be you had to press them, but now they can detect falls, detect your voice. Uh, we're seeing, you know, um, clothes, wearables, uh, and, and things like that that have built-in uh, sensors that can uh, sense, uh, you know, your patterns and uh, how you're moving. And if something's amiss, of course, you know, you can, uh, you know, put sensors around your whole house that can uh, help with that and help loved ones kind of detect what's what's going on and pillboxes mm -hmm. that uh, are become more and more automated. I think almost to the point that they become confusing for some, uh, but yeah. some are almost robotic in nature where, you know, the caregiver can program them to, uh, to kind of open up almost like a vault or a safe. But uh, my mother yeah. still used the tried and true Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, there's a lot of gizmos and gadgets. I'm a gadget guy. So I drive my wife crazy with, with that stuff. Um, you know, very much I see myself as a connector. So on the summit, we had another woman, uh, and her name was Lisa Cini, C-I-N-I, and she has a great site. I mean, if you want to just get a snapshot of what's going on, it's called bestlivingtech.com. And uh, she had a great analogy. She said that smart smart technology is like Alfred the butler. And I think he, he, most of your viewers would actually know Alfred, not just us baby boomers. Uh, he was the butler in Batman. And her, her, her whole... Her whole um, analogy there is that it should always be in the background and never intrusive and, and be there when you need, when you need the technology. Uh, so certainly the pendants, the wearables, the Apple Watch, the Fitbits, all of these help you live uh, a little bit more healthier and uh, with more safety. Uh, but certainly, um, you know, we're seeing trends. I'm sure Brian can address this better than I, but smart lighting. Uh, where it can help you sense you coming into the room, right. uh, adjust, adjust the uh, uh, kind of the, the intensity, the circadian uh, smart lighting, uh, where the light adjusts naturally to keep your body in a natural rhythm, uh, certainly. Uh, I just found out from Lisa something uh, called a hearing loop. And uh, it's a special type of sound system that's used by people with hearing aids. And it, it kind of provides a magnetic wireless signal that is picked up by the hearing aid and cuts out unwanted background noise and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, induction cooking is another big thing for safety, uh, where, you know, once you, that, that pot leaves the stove, you know, you can't awesome, necessarily yeah. burn yourself or uh, keep the burner on to set, set the house on fire. So, you know, there's some of the things I'm sure Brian has seen a lot, a lot of these as well. Yeah. 
Well, you've talked a lot about the wearables, which I think are very, there's easy access to those and people might feel very comfortable about those because it's just something that you wear. But Brian, tell us about the things that might go structurally into a home that's having modifications done to it. Sure. Um, on, on less of a, you know, tech basis, right? Because I deal less with the tech and more of the building products. There's a lot of products that uh, are, are really great when remodeling for universal design, there's a company called uh, Weedy, W-E-D-I. It's a German company. Mm. And they have wet bath systems that increase the uh, speed of a bath remodel by days, which is super important when you think about um, the urgency to get someone back home and in to uh, a functioning home, right? An accessible home. Um, and there's just tons of companies like that who are rapidly developing technology for remodeling that's cohesive with universal design. Yeah. So what is this loop, hearing loop that Anthony was talking about? So, Anthony, you probably know about the loop better than I do. Um, but there's a lot of technology on the market, um, whether it's done at the remodeling phase or if it's done as kind of like a retrofit mm -hmm. plug and play type of product. Um, for vision and hearing, because a lot of what we don't think about uh, with remodeling is that person's uh, vision and hearing limitations, stuff like soundproofing um, and, and lighting and the color of lighting and mm -hmm. things like that. That's all stuff that needs to be considered. And that's usually done by, um, you know, not by the remodeler, but by an occupational or physical therapist or rehabilitation facility as a recommendation. So where does that appear on your list of things to do for somebody when they come to you? Um, I mean, is that like the second layer or is it the first layer? Well, um, a lot of that you would consider almost like finished materials mm -hmm. for a job. Okay. Okay. Color of lighting and things like that. So, you know, in construction, we think about things in rough stage, which is the structure and the layout and then finished materials. I mean, everything down to the paint color can make an immense difference. And the, uh, the sheen of your tile, whether it's glazed or unglazed and how slip resistant it is. I mean, they have things like slip resistant ratings for tiles too, that you mm. can reference. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot to consider, but I'd put that in, in the finish category. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. What about, um, Anthony, a voice uh, activated technology like the, you know, we're all hearing about the Alexas of the world and, you know, they're listening into your conversations. I mean, clearly it's possible for these voice activated technologies. I mean, I even, I hardly ever type a message on my phone anymore. I always text, I just speak it, even though the, the autocorrect makes it funny sometimes, but um, it just saves me a lot of time and you know, so on. And, and from a safety perspective, you know, if I had to call someone, like call my son, I would, I could just say call Nathan and it would immediately connect me. So yeah, and this get, yeah, yeah, yeah this gets into the senior isolation piece, right? right so right. how do you address yeah. the socialization? So, you know, I joked that my mother, uh, when she passed, she was 94 and she had a Facebook page and uh, it kept her engaged. If nothing else, it was uh, easy for her to spy on me to see where I was and what I was eating. And then I would get heck for it later uh, because she had all her cognition. So, uh, and, uh, uh, but, you know, certainly with FaceTime and things like that, they're the simple baseline things that can keep people engaged. Right. But, you know, you've seen these Oculus uh, glasses that you can put on your head that create 3D worlds for people and create experiences where, uh, you know, you could be at a Frank Sinatra concert and, a, you know, things like that. They're using them in senior living, but we, I've seen people use them in their home. And then what you're talking about, certainly the AI, artificial intelligence and the Alexa. So I'm an advisor to a company called Brio Care, mm. uh, B-R-I-O-C-A-R-E. And so he's developed uh, uh, an app that goes with Alexa and Google Home, and essentially, you know, you know. Now, frankly, Alexa is so uh, interesting in that if you're smart enough and intuitive enough, you could probably figure out a lot of the skills on your own. But what he's done is congregate the yeah. typical skills you need to think about if you know you're aging in place and you're the caregiver. So, in my house, I have two Echoes 
And uh, my wife's the guinea pig because she's a couple years older than me. So I made her the care recipient and then I'm the caregiver. And so, you know, I program medication reminders on there. Uh, sometimes I program smart remarks on her just to drive her crazy, um, you know, that kind of thing. And so during the day, all of a sudden, I'll, you know, I'll hear Alexa saying, uh, this is Brio. Uh, have you remembered to take your medication? And actually, it's a good reminder yeah. for me because some yeah. mornings I haven't you done that yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, so there are, those are emerging and they're going to get smarter and smarter. I think the the scary part, you know, and we've talked, you know, uh, my friend Abrio, we've talked with incubators, accelerators, and even the smart people are are still afraid that these things are spying on you and collecting all your data and big brothers watching. So there it's, is a there is a kind of a you know, something you got to get over and use these. I love it because it's really been helpful for me in the last month and a half that I've had it in the house. It's a price you pay, isn't it? That, that transparency is the price you pay. But one thing I was going to mention to you is something I discovered recently, which is um, to do a socialization in a different way. I mean, I'm an older, I'm older than you. So I, now I, you know, friendship is even, is harder. I live in a, in a, another, a country that doesn't speak English. So I am very isolated and lots of people live in those types of situations. Um, and this, um, these apps I've been discovering that create friends. So there's one called Replica. Don't know whether you know replica with a K, and basically it's a little person you talk to, you know. And and you go in and I mean I I play with it just because I'm interested in the like you the technology. But it's like, well, how are you doing today, Margaret? You know, well, I'm going to go um to the shops. Oh, that's interesting. What are you going to buy? And they actually they're not very smart yet. Hmm. But they will be soon, so that they know your personality and what you like and um. It's, it's, and in Japan, I think they're doing a lot with uh, automated like robots, like robots. little pets mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So, I know mean, this is kind of off the subject, I guess. But in a way, do you think, Brian, that this is not off the subject, that a, a, a retrofitted house needs humanity in it as well as safety? <laughs> yeah, a absolutely. Um, technology is obviously wonderful. I mean, you know, my generation is super in tune with all this. Sometimes it's a little it's a little too really? much. Yeah. And it's almost like, uh, you know, the boomers and, and our older generations, they could um, benefit from it more than we can, right? Because mm -hmm. you've had the opportunity to have all that actual in-person socialization. And now, um, you know, sometimes that technology can, can be great. But, you know, in, in remodeling, you have to think a lot about um, something called visitability, which is, you know, maybe you're in great physical condition, but if your friends are not, then how point. are they going to get to your house? Yeah. Maybe point. you're in perfect physical health with no signs of um, like hip or knee or something that would really debilitate you. But um, wouldn't it be nice for your friends to come over? So if you're doing universal design, you have to incorporate some visitability. It makes your house a welcoming place for everyone. It's a really good point. Well, I guess we've always got Skype and Zoom and we can just chat with each other virtually. The whole yeah. world's shifting, isn't it? Well, look, I've really learned a lot. Is there, are there any points that we've missed here, Anthony or Brian, about this whole idea of the technology in uh, aging in place? You know, maybe not technology related, but tech, it's technology pl platform. But there is, um, you know, one of the things about aging in place is, is some of the trends emerging in society. And so there's an idea of home sharing that's taking oh, yeah. place. Big. And uh, there's a company that's getting a lot of publicity right now. I think they were just on the Today Show here in the States called Silver Nest. Oh, and yeah. by use of technology, yeah. uh, they can match roommates together. And, and so part of this discussion about aging in place is maybe you don't have to age in place alone. Uh, obviously, that's fraught with some risk as well, because we know senior abuse and fraud and, and, and things like that uh, is rampant. Uh, yeah. I mean, unfortunately. No, it's really interesting you mentioned that because uh, we have um, some sister sites to 60 and Me, and one of them is called Learn to Simplify, and it's about simplifying and downsizing. But one of the categories on the website is co-housing, co-living, and house sharing. And I know the people at Silver Nest because we, we used to have one of our bloggers who worked there with them as they were getting started, and they are doing an awesome job, silvernest.com. But co-living for boomers is another whole thing where you have your bedroom or a small space in a big house or apartment building and then you share the you know this is millennials brian you know this because it's very big with the millennial community uh, who don't have the money to pay for their own apartment they just want a bed and then a big 
like open space for a kitchen and open space for a living room and so on. So I think boomers will pick up on this too. Do you think that's true, Anthony? Yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, my boomer friends, we used to joke that we're, we were just going to buy one house together, yeah. but, but we, we had to screen everybody because we wanted to make sure. So I'm a professional musician as well as everything else that I do. And so, you know, I'd be the resident entertainer. And so we also wanted to have a resident lawyer, a resident doctor. So it had to be the right yeah. combination of people in the house first. <laughs> well, this has been a really fascinating chat. Brian, is there anything that we've missed in terms of the technology that you have to think about when you're helping people remodel and refit their houses? No, I think it's been pretty comprehensive. Great. Well, check out uh, Brian's website is um, harveyhomemods.com and uh, Anthony's is theagingexperience.com. And what I love, by the way, about this conversation as we close is how you are so uh, connected to your community. Like you've all, both of you mentioned other people are doing cool things, different companies are helping. It's like, I, I've never really experienced that with professionals before. Like you, it's just a wide open space of, uh, of growth and opportunity. Plenty of room for everybody. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian, very much. And thank you, Anthony. We'll talk again. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Our Patreon supporters help us to make a bigger difference in the lives of women over 60 all around the world. They get exclusive videos, live video shows, discounts, and much more. So please look for the link on this page. It is somewhere down here, up there. <laughs> And join our tribe of women in our 60 and Me community who are actually making a big difference in the world, challenging aging stereotypes. So thank you so much for your support.